you know, a two dimensional optimal space. But it is a, here, I am not talking about, uh, I am not uh, talking about uh, uh, vector space, rather, I am not talking about it, it is a function line of thing instead of uh, this type of Euclidean. And but but basic uh, notations you will see that it, it is same because I am trying to operate it in a uh, functional domain for two time. Now any arbitrary function in the space can be generated by a linear combination of the basis functions. That means say say I have a this is a function say I am say this is my say I am representing function as a vector say this is my phi one t and say this is your phi two t. Now, phi rather rather I will I will show right it is a it's not phi. It is psi one t and psi two t. There are orthogonal sets of intersection. Okay. And so any arbitrary function, say. Uh, say here, you can you can just generate by the linear combination of psi one and psi two, as long as this function say phi t is in the space spanned by this one spanned by psi one and psi two. That, that is the basic rule. And the basis functions, these basis functions must satisfy the condition. That means I told that it is a orthogonal space, and and the basis basis functions are in linearly independent functions that what I do that I am defining that integral of 0 to t psi j t and psi k t when j equal to k that means say psi 1 t psi 1 t and psi 1 square t psi 2 square t something like that and that t is 0 to symbol duration capital T is the symbol duration it is that time it is some non-zero value so some some uh, say psi 1 t psi 1 t, psi 1 square t. it is some k1 okay k1 delta 1 1 delta 1 1 means 1 but if it is i j and they are different then i have 0 so it, it is like that these two so if i just take so these functions that is integral of these two will be 0 when j not equal to k and will have finite value when j equal to k okay and for a, for a support 0 to capital t now, see this one, if you, if you just consider that integration as summation and t as tk kind of thing, discrete one, then you will find this is some sort of a vector product, a dot product of two vectors. Say psi j is a vector, psi k is another vector, say summation psi j delta t, psi k delta t, you will find that this is a basically a dot product. Dot product is, if so you do psi 1 dot psi 1 is some non-zero value, or psi 2 dot psi 2 dot is another non-zero value, but psi 1 dot psi 2 that will be zero when they are orthogonal. Okay, so this is the basically our orthogonality condition and this is the Connecticut delta function that you that you know. Now that when this kj constants, these kj constants are non-zero then that is orthogonal. So the signal space, so this space, so this space is called signal space that anyway you talk about there is delta space in your max plus, so the same thing. Okay. Now now, this another thing is that each psi j p function of the state of the basis function must be, please remember, it is linearly independent. It is not statistical. It is, please remember, it is linearly independent with the other members of the state. That means I have a set of psi 1, psi 2, psi 3. Psi 1 is linearly independent of psi 2, psi 2, psi 2 is linearly independent of psi 1, psi 2, and psi 3 is linearly independent of uh, psi 1, psi 2. Say here I am making a three dimensional space, they say maybe here it is say psi 3. That means linearly independent means what? You cannot generate psi 1 t or its or uh, if you cannot generate psi 1 t or k psi 1 t, some scalar multiplication of psi 1 t by linear combination of psi 2 t and psi 3 t. It is true that is some x axis vector. Can you represent, can you generate some vector in this direction? Some, some. So, so vector means here function is a vector actually. Vector is a very generic term. Okay, because see vector does not mean always that I have a, some force in that direction. That's a 
that's a it is if you do like this but any function is also equal as a, as a vector okay so, so you cannot generate any vector on, on this direction by the linear combination of these two. Similarly, you, you cannot generate k into psi to or p into psi to p is a scalar number. So by the linear combination of psi 1 and psi 3. So that means psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, they are, with, uh, this, this function, they, they make uh, some sort of a, uh, it is, they are linearly independent. Okay. And so that means each psi jt must not interfere with any other members of the set in the detection process. Now, and also that this each psi jt is mutually perpendicular to each other for j not equal to for orthogonal space time, orthogonal basis function. Now, if I take, that means say psi 1 t, psi 2 t, psi 3 t, and psi jt corresponds to a real value voltage and current waveform, okay? Some form function associated to a 1 ohm resistive load, then using, so, uh, that the normalized energy in joules dissipated in the load in t seconds, okay, due to the psi g. Say, first of all, I am taking this is my psi 1 t, okay, this is psi 2 t, it is a function, and this is my psi 3 t, and this is some signal, okay. Now, psi j t goes, so that means psi 1 t, psi 2 t, these are, this psi j t is as the real value voltage or current wave from Associated then using equation, the normalized energy in joules dissipated in load t second due to psi j is so this one that means 0 to t psi j square t dt equal to kg. So that means this. So please try to understand that when we do 0 to t psi j, so this is some sort of a in our first year also, first year electrical technology, we talk this this component something energy of a signal. Okay, forget about resistive load, this, that, so rather take a complete signal theoretic approach. So that is a circuit theoretic approach that, okay, I have to show. So this is some sort of an energy of a signal and that psi 1t, psi 2t, psi 3t, all are some sort of a, uh, defined between 0 to capital. Now, now that, now you see that, it, that any arbitrary finite set of waveform is trying to understand any arbitrary finite set of waveform SIG I1 to M, okay, where each member is of the set, each member of the set is S1 T S2 T is physically realizable and of duration T, symbol duration T can be expressed as a linear combination of N orthogonal functions. So, and where N is less than M. So, N is less than equal to M means I, I have a set, uh, set two dimensional space, but I can generate 10 different uh, functions. Okay. See, I have, but what I like to say, I have a set, say, psi 1t and psi 2t. I can generate 10 different functions. Okay. Now, here I am saying that I am, and this is the linear form, so S1, T, S2, T, S, M, T. That is a psi 1t and psi 2t. And say so I can generate 10 cross 2, 5 cross 2 with 10 equations. And here it is only psi 1 and psi 2. Okay. So, so here I am. So that means you have the psi 1 to psi n are the orthogonal basis functions. And you have the arbitrary set of waveforms S1t. So that means that S1t you can, you can decompose into this basis function that many a times we do. Now, that means we are representing some SIT as summation uh, AIJ, AIJ was J1 to N, J1 to N number of things, IJT, where N less than M. Okay. So that means it's a N less than M means if, you, if I just do a vector matrix form, that means I have a S vector, okay, say of T, S vector means S1, T, S2, T, S3, T, SM, T, equal to say some A matrix with some psi vector, okay, that is, so what is the length of psi vector? This is N cross 1, this is M cross 1, and this A matrix 
This is a tall matrix which is M cross M. Now tall matrix means M is big. M is big, bigger than M. Okay. Now where only thing is that I have that that if you if you do this thing, that means if you if you find out that what is my A I J. So in this in this equation, you see that this is means you do lot of transform calculus. That means a Laplace transform, Fourier transform. You will basically find you basically you are playing with uh, this thing basically. Okay. Now anyway, so at this point we will not discuss those things. Now what is my A I J? Now if I do S I J multiply with psi J and you just integrate it. Then what will happen? You will have only psi i, psi j. Those components are present. Means when i is equal to j and i not equal to j components, all will be zero because psi i is the orthogonal set. So then you will have this. That what you will get? That means see, if I just multiply that s i t with say some psi k t. So both sides also will multiply psi k t, and then you will find that when j equal to k, then only you will have the value. So that means it will be a k or whatever you say they they have been presented in this way. So I have, and and if you you will find out that you will get some constant over here and this type of functions. That means what I like to say. You just integrate s i t with psi k t d t zero to t. That means if I just do the integration psi j t i k t d t. Now, now you. Play with when j equal to k only, then only you will have some value at k something. So then, what will happen? That so that time it is some sort of a a i k kind of thing. And then you play in place of k, you just put j, you will get this type of expression. And what about k j? You will find that it will, it will come. So that. If I just do this, then you have a sorry, a i j equal to k a i k. You have psi k psi k is how much? Some k k k kind of thing. Psi k psi k is k k. Okay. That means that one by k k is I change it. That okay, and k k is your initial k k in case of k k you put k k in the figure. So so that means this coefficient is the value of the component psi j psi j t component of the psi. That means what is my e i j? Now you see, so I am just removing this one. If you play a little bit with this now, you will get it. Now what? Sorry. Now, now the coefficient. What is the a i j? Is the value of that? That means it is some sort of a psi j t component of the signal s i t. That means because this is the that signal s i t along the psi j t. What is there? That component is there. Now that the form of psi j t is not specified. It is chosen for convenience and generally depends on the signal. That means till now I have not defined the nature of this psi j t. Okay, it actually we choose it depending on the signal. Uh, the set of signal wave form this psi t can be viewed as a set of this. I can I can choose it as that a i one a i two to a i n. That is what. That means s i t. That means s one t is a one one a one two a one. Similarly, s two t I can represent as a vector of a two one a two two a two n something like that. Okay. So that that we say for example a equal to three and we may plot s m. That means what is that for s m t is a one psi one t a psi two k psi six. That 
that and and a one a one a m two we can de uh, define from this this equation. Now I can this one that say if if figure three point three that means so that means that this one so along psi one it is a m one along s Psi two. This is this component is so say this component is a two and along psi three this component is a three. Okay, so that that we are defining here. Now, so I am defining this psi. So I I told that I can I can represent it. I can represent this SI as a vector, as a vector of AI1, AI2, AI. Generally, we represent that SI as is a column vector AI1 to AI n. Okay. Now, so 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 generally here they do bold, but in your copy you cannot do bold and all this. And that generally, that that these vectors S J and S K represent the prototype or reference signal belonging to the set of M waveforms, and the receiver knows a priori the location of the signal space of each prototype vector belonging to the M R set. Okay, during the transmission of any signal, the signal is part out by the noise, so that the resultant vector that is actually received is a part out version of S J. Plus n or S K plus n, okay, of the original one, where, where n represents the noise vector. The noise is additive by Poisson. Therefore, the resulting distribution of positive, the possible received signals is a cluster of cloud point around the S J and S K. I am coming to it. Let me let me do this. The cluster is dense in the center and becomes sparse with the increasing distance from the prototype. Now, let us let us see what it is saying. See. In presence of, say, I have a some sort of a, uh, uh, so it is like that. That signals and uh, I have a uh, three-dimensional space, psi one, psi two, psi three t, and I am sending. So that means I can represent it as a one psi one t plus a two psi two t plus a three psi three t. Okay. So here. That if, if say at the transmitter side you see that this is my say uh, the the for zero when I am sending zero I have this one when I am sending one say this is like this but the, at the receiver that is S J and S K okay but when at the at the channel there is a noise now there is no channel division only talk, we are talking about noise so then what will happen That means generally you should get at this point, but due to noise it is at the area cloud of point because noise is ah uh, some sort of if I just consider a noise is a Gaussian, so this one will be a in 3D it will be a Gaussian 3D Gaussian. So similarly here also you will find the same 3D Gaussian noise. Okay, now Gaussian noise with dimension three here. Now that that. If noise has, uh, if the noise uh, variance is more, then you will find that this will be sparse. And if, if the noise uh, variance is less, you will find that this will be dense noise kind of thing with far less number of uh, receive points at the far from the prototype. Okay, that means the from the transmitter at S1 and S2 or S3 or S3 what you are sending that is basically called prototype. Okay. Now the now say say now so this is quite fine. Now suddenly due to something say you have got uh, at the receiver you have got this point. So okay, you have received this point. Now you have to decide. That this receive point because I have I have a S J or S K say only two two one two two signal points signal prototype so whether I will choose S J or S K so that means I will to take some distance from S J and S K 
I will check that, okay, which one is the minimum distance. I will choose that. that one. Say from R, I will calculate, okay, this is my this distance and this is my distance. I am seeing this distance is less. So I am choosing, okay, this is actually less. Yet due to noise and other things, it has, it has, it has come. Okay. So, and, and this, this SJSK, I told that SJSK is basically a, I want to AIN. That you can you can is you can you can define you can either you can do it in a functional form or generally you do it in vector form in order to do the analysis better. Okay. So the receiver or detector must decide which of the prototypes within the signal space is closest to the distance of the receiver R. Okay. So that's what I explained. Okay. Now. So this is that, this is we say that this, this minimum distance means we say that it is a nearest neighbor or say nearest neighbor detector kind of, nearest neighbor rule, nearest neighbor detector. Now say let us talk about the waveform energy. Okay, what is waveform energy? Now you see that means the normalized energy that E I associated with the waveform SIT. That means SIT is the prototype waveform. Okay, SIT is what? SIT is something like this. That means SIT is say S2T. So like like this. Okay. Um, so that means energy is zero to T SI square T. That means if I just uh, SIT that AIJ SIJ T I means I one to M. Okay. Now, sorry, A I J this is J. Okay. And finally, if it, as it is the square is there, I what I will do? I will take the two index, one J and another K, and and then I push this integration inside as the summation and integration as a linear linear operator. So you can interchangeably use. And you can take out this AIK, put this uh, integration inside, and you see this one that J and K. When I have a K, then what I will get that I will what is what is this this uh, this one as they are the orthogonal function. This they are the orthogonal function set. I will I J I K is K J delta J K. So I will have. Now that means delta jk and so I will just put j1 to n whatever it is. Now delta jk so that means when j equal to k then only I will have the or rather k equal to j. So that is in this function this one that k must be j. So that means aij this one will be k must be j aij so that is aij square and anyway this is kj. So you see that the this this is basically this this is some sort of a Parseval theory. Means that means here you see that that the energy what I am doing individual AIJ square with some kj term. That means that the integral square of the waveform is it to the sum of the square of the orthogonal series coefficient. That means uh, that AIJs are orthogonal series coefficients. Means what is AIJs? Basically, this is my AIJ. This is orthogonal series coefficient. These AIJs. That means you are basically sum of AIJ square. So basically, your total energy sum of AIJ square and also yes, yes, a KJ term. Now, now if some sort of a, instead of orthogonality, if we talk about orthonormality, what is orthonormality? Because many times we use this orthonormality, that means we say that when I have like this, this kj equal to one. Okay, that means that means that that these two that when psi one t and psi one t if I do the integration, then it is one. And when psi one t and psi two t, psi one t, psi g t, I am doing the integration, then it is zero. Okay. So if it is an orthonormal case when kj equal to 1, you see the energy of the, uh, means the, the 
thermal energy or the waveform energy that is basically summation of this graph it is just an energy is just a sum of squares okay that means that you see that energy of s1 square is s1 t that which is integral of s1 square t dt that if i can so, so which may be a I am coming to it. So, so if I can break it properly in the orthonormal function, that is sin 1 t sin 2 t sin 1 t orthonormal function, the energy of s1 t is basically a11 square plus a12 a square to a11 square. Okay. So you need not do all integration and all these things. Okay. Just so which is which is computationally very useful. Okay. Now this is this is my over a and this energy is over a single symbol duration please remember this is over a single to single duration and and also that that if i have the that s1 t s2 t s3 t they are all of equal energy then i need not put i then i will just say e equal to summation that means if i assume that s1 t s2 t s3 t s4 t all are of same energy then i if i calculate one then it's all the same for all that means i will just calculate uh, e for any for any particular uh, i okay now this is this this let us let us see that means i have some sort of a um, say say i have a s1 t is like this that means say this is some say i have a, this is my s2 t sorry See, remember capital t is 1 okay and this is my s3 t and what i am doing so i have a some sort of a three functions but my uh, orthogonal space is two dimensional that means i am this s1 t s2 t and s3 t i will break it into decompose it into psi 1 t and psi 2 t please try to understand this psi 1 t and psi 2 t So say, say on, that means if I, if I choose the psi one t and psi two t in this, you see that means if you do inti that uh, integral of psi one t psi two t, that will be always zero because integration of this one and this one up to this you will find it is one and up 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 to this integration it will be one and after that it will be minus one so that integral of psi one t psi two t that will be zero and if I take the integral of psi one square t. So it is now integral of psi j t psi k t for j equal to k. It is capital T. It is not orthonormal. Please remember that when I told that if it is g k equal to k, when it is one, then it is orthonormal. Anyway, so that means for for getting the orthonormality, we what we have to do one by root t psi j t or one by root t psi k t. Then it will be one kind of because. For getting one, that we have to do some one by t. One by how will you get one by t? You push this one by root t psi j t is of actual psi j t, and one by root t uh, psi j t is actual psi j t. Then you will you will get this. Anyway, so I have a psi one. Either I can choose the psi one psi two t in that way, or I can choose the psi one prime and psi two prime. Say another set. So at least this is the orthogonal set of orthogonal function set. This is another orthogonal function set. Here also you see that means if I Do the uh, integration. So the when it is one, then it is zero, and when this is one, then this is zero. So that means if I take to the this when j equal to the j not equal to that is one and two, you will find it is always zero. Like so this into zero, this up to this this function into zero, and up from up to one, this function into zero. So so now that means the example of an arbitrary signal set to an orthonormal set. That means what I am doing is one t as I am just breaking it into s one t, s two t, and s three t. Please remember that your n equal to three and n equal to two. Okay. So psi one t minus two psi two t. Means if you if you just see a little bit and you can you can do it in like way like this. Or otherwise, what you can do you can calculate this a i j in that. If I have the formula, that how to calculate this a i j? That means you can from because you have this s t and you have chosen your psi t and you can calculate this and k is my t here. Okay, 
so you will get this a now either you, you can generally we do in this way we never check means visually and do this so this is your a11 is 1 a12 is minus 2 a21 is 1 a22 is plus 1 a31 uh, is 2 a32 is minus 1 like that okay now similarly if the orthogonal set is psi 1 3 and psi 2 but if i choose the orthogonal set as psi 1 prime and psi 2 prime see a different orthogonal set then what you will find that it will be a different one that means a11 is minus like that say, say i am just explaining you in this way. Say I have a signal like this, a two-dimensional, say normal thing. I can I can break it, the break the signal normally we break it in this way. That means some x component and y component. Or I say this is my signal, say some some s1. Okay. And this is your psi 1t, and this is your psi. Now, how you may be confused that why, how, how you are getting psi 1 prime and psi 2 prime. Say, I am doing, I can also break it in this way. Say, this is my S1t. I am breaking, so this is my psi 1t direction, and this is my psi 2t direction. Psi, sorry, psi 1 prime t direction, psi 2 prime t direction. So, you can, you can, you can get that. So depending and so so that means that you can you can break it in different orthogonal uh, set basically okay and and you will get a different a one and a two now. So that means you have got this and then so, so oh, what you have done, they have, they have already, already they have done the calculation and all these things. Anyway, so now, now the, that, now let us, let us, so that means this, that means this one, that means you are breaking S1T, S2T and S3T into say psi 1T and psi 2T. Okay, this is basically that that means if we want a system for transmitting S1, T, T, S2, T and S3, T, the transmitter and receiver need only be implemented using the two basis functions, psi 1, T and psi 2, T instead of three original waveforms. Okay. Because you see that if you are transmitting S1, T, S2, T, S3, T, rather if I, if I know the psi 1, T and psi 2, T and if I transmit only that 1 minus 2, all, all this information so you can uh, you can you can you can get that you can you can uh, get this s1 t s2 t s3 okay so instead of uh, sending s1 t s2 t s3 t i can transmit this uh, this coefficients okay so that means that so this is that the gram smith orthogonalization procedure that please please note this one gram smith orthogonalization procedure provides a convenient way in which an appropriate choice of basis function psi jt can be obtained for any given signal set that means that uh, that means i have given you s1 s2 s3 you will get psi 1 t psi okay so this is this is this is basically a gram speed. So the procedure procedure is very simple. It is a some standard mathematical uh, notation. Let me say it is. Say I have a vector set something like this. So first gram speed block I will take. So this is one orthogonal set, the same direction. The next orthogonal set, what will I do? I will take that projection of this one on this okay rather rather i will take the orthogonal projection of this one that means the, what is the orthogonal projection orthogonal projection error this one so the next one will be next orthogonal block will be this one that third one i will i will take the minus of the previous one previous projections and i will take care so that means if i have a 
take down S1 T and S2 T in that way. What I pass orthogonal is the this is my psi 1 T and psi 2 T will be the negative because minus this one original signal minus this some k into psi 1 t. So that means you will get this component that is from this signal if you just remove this projection you will get this say third component is on the say z axis. What will you do from that third S3 t which is along the z axis say outside I mean out of this paper then what you have to do you have to remove the x component this the psi 1 component and psi 2 component then you will get the that that the psi, psi 3 1 okay psi, psi 3 t so this is this and and you can you can check it it is it's a, it's in, a, in a quite standard uh, iterative wave you can you can write a small code you can you can you can do the transmit orthogonalization procedure or uh, you know modified transmit orthogonalization please check this appendix 4a this is this is part of the syllabus this is transmit orthogonalization Okay, and maybe in the next class I can I can I can discuss that. But please, if you if you read it, I can also I can I can explain graphically that what it is. Now next is the representing white noise with orthogonal waveforms. That means the additive white Gaussian noise. Why we are defining additive white because which is easy to analyze. Okay, and then your and what I am doing. That noise can be partitioned into two components, n t is n hat t and n t hat t. Where n hat t, I am just representing in some signal space. Okay, that means I have taken to be noise within the signal space or the projection of noise component. That means the on the signal from signal set psi one t and psi t t. And this n tilde is basically it is not in that. Part. That means what I like to say. Say it's a three-dimensional system. Okay, say noise is in basically say here, which is N T. What you say that you say these x axis, that you say this is your psi one t and psi t. Okay, this this to be done. What it is done that N T has a projection here. Now this N T is basically this N hat t. Is basically the noise noises project projection on psi one t and psi two t space, and this particular one that means the error which is this is n tilde. Okay, that is orthogonal projection error. So that means this is the signal space then some component of the noise is in is lying in the signal space and some component is not lying in the signal space. That that vertical component that z axis. This is your z axis component. That is n tilde t, and this is n hat t. Okay, so that n hat t, as it is in, it is lying in the signal space, uh, psi one t and psi t. So you can represent that n hat t as a linear combination of this one. Okay. So some instead of a i t, here they are writing n g line. Okay. And this n tilde t that I told n tilde t is n hat t minus n t minus n hat t. That 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 is this one. So I can represent this n t as some n j psi j t, that is the signal component, and some n tilde t. And what is my n j? The same way a i j one by k j. It is the same thing for all j. And I have n. But if I take the n tilde t psi j t, so that means you see that n tilde t is n tilde t dot product of a as n tilde t is orthogonal to psi one t and psi two t. So n tilde t dot or integral of n tilde t with psi one and integral of n tilde t to psi two that will be always zero. Okay, because n tilde t is orthogonal to individual uh, signal 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 uh, orthogonal functions. Okay, so that that we are we are talking about this. Okay, now that similarly I can represent n as n one n two because why n n because I have this n t I can represent by yes. Not n t, the other n hat should be represented by n one n two kind of thing. Okay, so yes, n n hat t uh, can be represent. Actually, it is uh, we can express n hat t by a vector of coefficients, but it is n hat, it is n zero, n one two n n, where n is the so. So now. 
now that so now we try to understand this n tilde p the noise has two portion one is the n hat p and another is the n tilde p. now this that that the n tilde t n tilde t is basically is not interfering with the signals because n tilde t with dot the uh, n tilde t integration psi 1 p and n tilde t integration psi 2 p that is basically zero so that's why n that that n tilde t is not creating is not interfering with the signal what is interfering with the signal in hack because that is lying in the signal space itself which is the x y plane okay or psi 1 to psi 2 so we are so rather i am saying rather i am making my uh, life simple i am saying no now so i am not bothered about nt and i am bothered, i am interested about in hack okay my or rather i can say nt is inactive and there is no nt so my signal when i am saying that my noise is basically lying that is, I am interested in those noise on which is which is actually degrading my signal signal, uh, signal transmission problems. So we, um, there are some always there are some noise which is actually not causing any problem. I am not bothered about that. So I am saying so I am interested in those noise where any NT equal to NT. That is NT I am not interested. Or rather, I am saying that my NT is equal to NT. That part of what is there, I am not interested because I am interested in signal space. I am interested in this space. I am not interested in the particles. Okay. So that that that's why they are saying that that n hat t will henceforth be referred simply as n t because the signal space noise we are talking about. Okay. Now this so this n hat so that means your n hat t n hat t is represented by this that is n n t is basically n hat t is basically represented by psi one psi two psi n. So at now n hat t is n so they are represented n one n two n n n time. I think this. Not psi one, it's a polar coefficient n one n two n. Okay, this n one n two n, and this n is a random vector with zero mean and Gaussian distribution where noise component i one to i n are independent. Okay, so this is about the vector space analysis. Now another thing is that the now the white noise. What about the variance of white noise? Okay, now because white noise is a some sort of a, it, it is it is a zero mean we have studied. But we we are not talking about variance. Now the variance, what we, that means that it is something we are saying it is sigma square. That is variance of n t. Now variance of n t is basically we can we can define the power spectral density. This is a is a new term. You see that means the power spectral density is basically. You see, see for a zero mean signal, the sigma square is basically for for a zero mean noise. The variance of the noise is basically power of noise. Do you understand this? What is the sigma square? Expectation of n square t. So that means there's some sort of a mean of limit n tends to infinity in one by n summation n sum k equal to a zero to infinity. Okay, this is a basically a this is a power. Okay, so that means while well, zero mean signal variance is the power. Now what I am defining this power as some of n zero y two and some d h is the frequency line. Okay, so I am just making making trying to give you the physical feel. That means some power spectral density into frequency. Okay, I I will discuss in the next class from the another book what is power spectral density and what is in energy spectral density. But try to understand this is some sort of a power spectral density into some frequency. Okay, so you will have a power kind. Of and this 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 is the please remember this noise variance please remember it is average noise power not instantaneous noise power 
okay because the noise is zero mean if it is not zero mean then average variance is not average noise now this is n0 by 2 and df now this this variance you will see that variance is infinite okay because that that, that, that if, I, if i just plot this, this is called some sort of a power spectral density and power spectral density you will find this side it is f and this side it is minus f actually this is basically n0 by 2 okay so if i just do the integration okay so it's some df okay so just uh, it will it will move in this way okay both direction from minus to plus infinity. so it will be uh, you know infinity so now although the variance of additive white gaussian noise is infinity the variance of the filtered awgn is try to understand filtered awgn is finite that means that if the AWGN is correlated with one set of orthogonal functions, phi, phi j t, the variance of the correlator output will be some sigma squared is the variance of n j, correlator output n j. So, if I do this thing, that is n t and phi j t, this is, it will be coming as n zero by t. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll explain this thing in the next class, okay. Uh, but Monday, I will not take the class, but most probably I will take the class tomorrow at uh, from 5 to 6 okay so so we will discuss in the next class about uh, power spectral density and this this filter awgn and awgn and then eb by a0 this is also very important figure of merit okay so eb by a0 it is a normalized signal to noise ratio this is the basic snr parameter for digital conversion where well, it is basically a normalized snr so in the analog system, we talk about SNR, but in the digital communication system, we talk about normalized SNR. Okay, this is basically SNR. That you see signal power by noise power, some RB by W something. That's why we say normalized. Okay, so thank you, thank you very much. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, can you just tell uh, when is the class test? I told you, na, next Friday. Uh, and the syllabus, sir? Syllabus is the full syllabus till now. I will cover whatever I will cover till that time. Saturday, Saturday I will not take the class. Actually, the next week my problem is most probably Monday I will be out of session. Saturday also I will be out of session. So most probably tomorrow whatever it will be covered. Tomorrow and maybe Tuesday. Up to two. So then you will get time Wednesday, Thursday, in this time. Okay, but it is it is a uh, some sort of a 10 marks class test, maybe 20 minutes time. And that next Thursday is another scheduled test. Okay. So Friday is the class test, and after that Friday, another Thursday that is 25th or so. That is the normal, some kind of, we have to take three tests and all these things. This class test is for 40% with this class test and I will take another class test. So, which is teacher's assessment because as I am not taking attendance. And uh, three tests is like six and other three tests are like semester tests. Okay, which I have already announced long time. Okay, one is end of February, another is end of March and another is end of April. Okay. And in between, means end of March and end of April, mid of uh, April, I will take the another class test. So, before the first exam, one class test, before the last exam, another class test. Is it okay? Uh, sir, what will be the syllabus for sir, the test on hello. 25th? Up to 24th, what to 23rd or 22nd, whatever it is for. Okay. Yes. Somebody else was. Yes, sir. Means uh, uh, the subject will be means the test will be subjective or objective. No, 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 no. It, it, it is it is like that. What we will do? You have to write it in a copy. Okay. Then you have to scan it and upload it in Google form. Means Google form I will put as some sort of attachment facility. And you have to write the exam in keeping keeping the camera on. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir.